Have you ever took a good look at the transformation that Dragon Ball has? And went to yourself, damn, we got some good ones. But damn, do we have some ass ones. So starting all the way at the bottom are the ones that I'm not including. Base form, the Akari state, and Ascended Super Saiyan. Those may be different forms, but I don't feel it's right to include them in a transformation list. So starting truly from the bottom, we have Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, which also in turn Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. No one really liked it to begin with. Having a transformation that just comes out just to be a promotional marketing tool for a movie is one thing. Super Saiyan God obviously did that but there were two different cases case one the transformation was vital to the movie case two the transformation it lacked pizzazz the only positive i could think for it dragon ball super broly gave us easily the best transformation for super saiyan blue we've ever seen but that first time we saw it i have a bad taste in my mouth till this day i don't think i'm ever really gonna appreciate the form and for blue evolution the anime took it way too far with the anime particle effects i couldn't even tell what vegeta was doing half the time now next this transformation had a very short lifespan of when it existed but same time it wouldn't feel right without me mentioning it false super saiyan from the lord slug movie people theorize this is the original transformation what it was supposed to look like before toriyama had the finishing touches of adding the yellow and the blue no matter what we can obviously be glad that this is not the route toriyama took to creating super saiyan now primal transformations are something that we're lacking in modern dragon ball so looking back on the ozaru transformation the one transformation that you can easily say is pure primal i don't look at it as a useful transformation over the years how we have been accustomed to all these grand transformations that change the hair more or less and you look at the Zaru which changes everything it should be higher yet it's just something about the form that doesn't really appeal to me it's such a drastic change from what we were in base that doesn't really leave much for me to kind of be like "Ooh, that looks so cool Ooh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. okay if a transformation is supposed to change something about you physically or change is supposed to come mentally this is a transformation that i think came mentally but it did not stick around nor did it do anything significant enough for me to even consider it a good transformation and that's of course i'm talking about mystic slash ultimate gohan having nothing physically changed about him but his attitude his confidence and his raw power doesn't mean that i'm gonna immediately look at it as a transformation but when it came in after we saw a seven year hiatus from what he formerly was which was basically a beast and then having his first outing be horribly disrespected by bootanks not gonna lie it leaves a little bit of a sour spot but how the form was achieved is where the downside really kicks in see back when guru unlocked the full potential of gohan we believe that gohan was now going to show us the inner power sure it took a while then cell saga kicked in we saw the pure rawness of gohan unleashing we felt so cathartic because we finally see a character that was only introduced in z play such a primal role in the story but for him to have another awakening through another character giving him a power boost it may have given me a cool moment but a moment is only a moment it lasts for the time that you watch it it does does not live on forever and just like the next form beast gohan i'm not even gonna try to sugarcoat it beast gohan overall it's a good form i just wish we had it back when maybe gohan went super saiyan 2 that's why i believe future gohan is the best character of all of dragon ball hands down all right next speaking of future gohan his pupil had a new form we call it rage trunks i call it bullshit a form deprived through anger giving the user a power up at the last minute when they need the most the scene was raw everything about it was cool as hell but the visuals is where you lost trunks getting a new form that has all this special effects just more blonder hair and could easily have used a new design and trunks by god with everything he went through he deserves a new form now i follow like son you can clearly tell from the shirt that i'm wearing <laughs> ultra ego vegeta bringing vegeta back on the top people thought bringing vegeta a brand new path of power people thought a couple years later i'm sorry is that form even still a good form that's not kind of like push around the bushes there you know what i mean is ultra ego even a good idea taking it in face value a form that does not follow what we taught instead following the power of beerus premise wise so far sounding pretty good then you introduce that the power gets stronger the more he gets beaten up then you kind of raise an eyebrow saying like wait 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 vegeta needs to get beaten up in order to get more power then wouldn't that just be setting goku up to come make the save every time and you be right because immediately after he made that transformation what does he need he needs help from goku only because he couldn't sustain that form due to the fact that he was too injured to maintain it now this next form it came it saw it conquered it left i'm talking about super saiyan rose it makes sense that goku black got a new form through training with goku's body understanding it more rage is how a saiyan unlocks his 
power, which isn't true because Ultra Instinct and Super Saiyan God was not unlocked through rage. But as Rose kept going, it became more infinitely bullshit. Now we get to the golden cusp of transformation. Starting with Super Saiyan 3. Super Saiyan 3 was off screen. Yet, for as random as the transformation is, and for how clear the drawbacks are, it's just Super Saiyan 3 lacks the one thing that most of these transformations above it really have. And that is the touch. The lack of words you can have for Super Saiyan 3 is purely based on the fact that Super Saiyan 3 within the series was useful on two occasions. To stall Majin Buu and when Go Tanks used Super Saiyan 3. Super Saiyan 2. Let's get the point. Super Saiyan 2, really good with Gohan, great. But when everyone else does Super Saiyan 2, it's just Super Saiyan with lightning effects, let's be honest. The birth of modern day Dragon Ball. It came in the fact that we received a brand new transformation, plus brand new animation, plus some brand new characters. Super Saiyan God was the way to go. Being in opposition to everything Goku has been trying to do throughout his whole journey. Power not through his own, but power through help from others. Boy, let me introduce you to a form that you could honestly argue was the most unlike shonen transformation that we've got in the series. It changed so little, but also changed so much. And the only reason I wouldn't place this higher is because it did not age like fine wine. This transformation immediately got replaced after the next movie. This transformation never had a course where it could develop to its own, you know, hierarchy of new forms like Super Saiyan did, where it got Super Saiyan 1, 2, and 3. It didn't get the chance like Super Saiyan Blue did. No, Super Saiyan God? No, no, no. Next transformation on this list is from GT. And if you're thinking Super Saiyan 4, no, it's not Super Saiyan 4. It's actually a transformation that I took very much a personal interest into until it kind of got a little bit goofy. Baby Vegeta, when he first first got corrupted. Changed so little while also giving Vegeta a new look. The line in his eyes. The white in his hair. The most disturbing unnatural look Vegeta has given. Yet, if you look at him from bottom to top, it looks like he hasn't changed much. But for a transformation that had the story behind it. Of the Tuffles. That story just made so much sense. And had the potential to be a Z-level saga. But where I may have lost you with this transformation, this next transformation, I feel as if I'm gonna win a lot of you guys back. Holy full power! Not able to cope with the power that he was given. If rage and uncontrollable power is what the form is, why hold back on what it can show? That's what I think Broly's full power form is unhinged. Now for the next one, we going back to GT. And yes, it is Super Saiyan 4. Mr. Edgy character with khaki pants that you know. Having a form going back to the Saiyan primal history, instead of going with these gods and beings from other worlds, trying to get back to where we all began with the Ozaru. Yet with the fact that this is a non-canon transformation, transformation and how much it makes sense but also what it does to goku's character it does a lot but what it does story-wise sadly enough it's held back because of it being non-canon but for this next form this one is more than just canon this form was the epitome of iconic none other than super saiyan coming in far late in the manga series showing the fact that a character can show his story progression through a physical change this physical change not having to be something uh, you know, going from a human going to a titan. No, this lives with the philosophy that Toriyama always kept with him when he was writing. That less is more. And that's why I believe that my personal number one choice lives with the premise of less is more. None other than Ultra Instinct Omen. Having the debut of it be in a one hour long special that not even manga readers nor anime fans could really ever expect. For as much as I don't like the mastered form, because once the master form kicks in, it just really looks like a trans transformation. So while Omen looked like, yes, a transformation, but it also looked like a state of being, Master Ultra Instinct looks basically a transformation. And also the aura, they overdid it. During that fight with Jiren, you can't even tell more or less what's going on. With Omen, it was the first time we saw the aura. It felt as if it wasn't ramped up too high. Also, three times we saw Omen was fantastic. Against Jiren the first time, made all the gods shit their pants. Second time, gave us the best finish of a Dragon Ball fight. The third time, it was clear to see what the shortcomings were. But thank you very much for watching and until next time you guys stay safe and peace